to see you. It's so nice. I'm so excited to listen to uh, you for today. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. You're so yummy. And, and um, you know, to think about it, we met on Station Agent. You were... I think 10. <laughs> I <laughs> was 20. my best no. <laughs> to act like a um, grown up. But I remember Tom McCarthy being so excited about you being in the movie. And it was very sweet. And I think back on that film all the time. You know, you know every, it's everybody, everybody still adores that film. And you can't cross the street without someone yelling, I love you in Station no. Agent, you know. But that was a beautiful experience. It was a beautiful experience, wasn't it? Because it was. of the people. I know, I, know. I think back on that so fondly, and I, I think, mean, man, did I have a good time. Gosh, did I, like, I just, I loved every second of making it. And so many movies are so um, pressurized. Pre and, yes, yeah. and, 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 you know, complicated. Yeah. But here we that were wasn't. in New Jersey with no money. That movie was shot for $500,000. Peter Dinklage, Bobby Cannavale, you, me, it was just, it was this, John Slattery came in for yes. a day yes. uh, to play my ex. It was just this, and Tom McCarthy and Tom had McCarthy. written this beautiful little gem of a movie, and we got to be in it. And he was, he had never directed before. And you know, remember, do you remember we were supposed to make it a year before we made it? And then we lost the money or something. Something happened, and we had to wait a year, and then we all gathered. Um, I feel so, whenever I see one of the gang from that mm -hmm. movie, I feel that age again. I feel so warmly towards them. I feel yeah. like it was a very special moment. It was something I'll, I, I, I'm, you know, when I see Pete, when I see Bobby, it, my heart lifts, yeah. and, and it just, yeah. it's, and it's a, it, I have a feeling about it that I, and I love my, we all love our other movies yeah. that we've done, but there was something so warm, unusual yeah. about um, the chemistry. And we were in that, well, it was a holiday inn on the, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the worst hotel. It was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. The, the circumstances of it were so <laughs> like, like, there were stains all over my and carpet. <laughs> yeah, icky. And I remember that we were out to I dinner one night. I think it was a body night. in my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> you gave me a great piece of advice that I oh, think God. of to this day. What it was just I very think? like actress to actress. Really? We were out to dinner before shooting the next day. And I'd ordered like some atrocious meal and you were like, no Chinese food before you have to shoot in the morning. And I was like, what? Tell me more. And you were like, salt. salt. And it was, I had no idea. It was like, but it was the, it was the wisdom that I really needed at the moment. I, I remember it. And I I've, still, like, I thank you for that. Oh and God. I am, I am yeah. always. And you don't eat Chinese food. And I know. No, I don't, I don't either. No, no, never, no, 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 no. Um, but no, I remember some like famous director had told me that. Yeah, you said, yeah. I remember that yeah, it was a DP. You said yeah. a famous oh, a DP, DP a famous had said DP. to you, please, yes. no Chinese food before you shoot in the morning. So, but it's, so it's amazing you. how, you know, that little film made for 500,000. And then the industry, the independent film became like started to grow in that, that time in period. In that time period. It exploded. Yeah. Remember this? I sure and do. And we had, you know, October films run by the great Bingham Ray, the great late, unfortunately, Bingham Ray. He's with us today, I think, somewhere. <laughs> He's always around, I think. Um, but uh, I think, you know, it's, but th it exploded and it, you, you really could make a movie for $500,000. It, was it was, wasn't video, it was film. It was on film, yes. And, but then, remember all the distribution companies then started to take dive and independent film was ailing about, that was 2003 and it was kind of, it was on the rise and then it just something happened and independent film hit that big kind of downward slump. When was that about? Well, it, feel, it felt like for a while it started to become not independent. Yes. It sort of became exactly like independent it. Um, had its moment and then it had this strange cachet to it and then people yes. were trying to capitalize on it and it changed the inherent nature of the thing and then it took this nose dive and it took because but that but station it, agent that yeah. was such an exciting time to be in new york city you just felt like you felt like you could scrape a couple bucks together and yes. go off and make a and, movie and people yes and and it was film it wasn't yeah. video yeah. and he was able to 
really shoot this oh. beautiful. Remember, it, he, they were we were on a wing and a prayer in that film because I remember we lost a location and Tom had to improvise and he said, You're, we're just gonna shoot by the train station and you're throwing the ball with the kids and they're in the, he grabbed the producer's kids <laughs> and put them in the film. It was the craziest, I mean, but that happened often. It was, you know, often it was, Tom was just having to kind of recreate things and yet the inherent beauty of his movie and his true talent and, and vision remain. Uh, and it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. Uh, Sometimes the spontaneity that you have to um, incorporate when you're working on that kind of a budget becomes like part of the beauty of the thing because it's yeah. really alive because you're having to make these decisions very much in the moment and then yeah. it, that commits itself to the movie and so you're left with like this artifact that's really you know very often you would only get a take a take <laughs> no there were something yeah. i remember we were shooting this like a big one of the big emotional scenes and there were speed boats going by so i had to unfortunately you know that grave scene about me telling about my son who had fallen off the monkey bars and i had to do that in between speed boats <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> i don't want to tell you your business it's your job to see the bad in us. That's not my job, Miss Crowley. I just want to remind you, there's good here too. No matter what you might have heard. But things have changed and here we are today. Um, and have <laughs> you found it very different, like working in television now as we both do? We do, we both have. And neither of us have done a particular large amount of television no and how how and do you find it how do you find it different from other mediums and what do you how do you feel like it well i think it's about the people you work with like i watch you in in uh, fossey verdon and i it to me it's a movie it's uh, when i worked with jean marc valet and amy adams and you know these remarkable people to take on this project and this frightening character, uh, this brutal character, um, I, I was lifted by the remarkable people around me. I, they, it felt like I was making a little movie each week. It didn't feel as though we were uh, on some kind of TV schedule or in some kind of TV framework or right. mind um, because it was HBO, it was cable. and. So we had, we had luxuries, right? you know, and I love doing independent films, but we know we, we like having a trailer. <laughs> it is so nice to have I, a trailer. I, I, I like being paid. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out this and, just in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and so I, but it, but it also, I don't think that took away any of the the art artistry or the or the brutality of the subject mm -hmm. and you have this mm -hmm. in 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 your work you have this really emotional journey physically and emotionally and so i think it's nice that i think we both had these journeys that were not similar but playing these women that had a very specific place in life and um i but I'm, I, I, I really liked TV. I liked doing this. I liked, it felt like home after a while. Isn't that nice to have something that you return yeah. to? Often making yeah. independent films, you're, on these, you're in these very intense situations with people, but for a very short amount of time. And then you disband and you grieve them. You, you miss grieve. them. Yeah. And to have the continuity of six, yeah. seven months of the same people it feels yes, like and the crews are yeah. so remarkable, and yeah. I mean, their their talent really, you know, you get to really take them in, um, and your hair and makeup people, you I get know, to stay close I to know. them, and all of the people that in a in a film, it's so fast and fleeting in in ways, and you always say you're going to stay in touch, <laughs> but it's hard because we, you know, with all of the people we meet, but when you work 
on this television, it's, it, it really is. It's, it's a lot of time spent together and a lot of, it's very long and emotional days. Fair. And, you know, I found, I found um, great comfort in knowing that I would return the next, that I had a long journey, that my journey wasn't brief. I think even though this character tortured me in many ways internally, um, it, it somehow eased the pain. And I would imagine to have playing the Gwen Burton, like, you know, family. it's such a beautiful portrait that you've made of this woman. And, but that, you know, week after week, you're going back and you're going back to the great Sam Rockwell and, you know, this great director. You know, you have how many directors on this? You, you've worked with... We really mostly had Tommy Kale, who's right. in her op straight amazing. from... Who's amazing. Amazing, amazing. And uh, both technically and with, with actors. So, mm -hmm. and he did most of episodes. We had three other directors. Kids in the jungle are being zipped into body bags on the evening. Richard Nixon is our president. God help us. People aren't going to the movies to escape anymore. They're going to find something true. Did Jean Marc do? Jean Marc did all, all of you. So it was really home week. Like it was like it was like there was uh, like uh, a homeroom. It, it was like school. You returned, and he was quite a master, wow. <laughs> and tough, and extraordinary, and brilliant, and possessed, and. And that was exactly what the piece was. It needed him. But I have a feeling with Thomas, like, I, you're, I mean, the journey you guys have all having, having to, have had to take, I look at what I had to do as a door, and then if I had to add, and I, I did do a little dancing as a door, but I'm saying is to recreate these iconic moments on top of the emotional life. How was that for you to... Were you intimidated at first, uh, you know, taking on Gwen Verdon and this? But you, I, you she, I, she lives in you. <laughs> I miss her. You know, it's when you work, when you like, when you play these women, maybe you don't miss <laughs> playing. I love uh, her, though. I don't judge yeah. her. I didn't judge her. I love her. So I didn't judge her. Mm -hmm. But, but Gwen. No, no, Gwen we is, never should. But yeah. I, I miss when you, it's, it's sort of the same as like having like a long run in a play or something when you. When you when you spend so much time with these women, it's hard when it's over. And this, it is. you know, we're used to making movies that last six weeks. Yeah. Um, or most you of know, the time we're working. Yeah. The yeah, movies we're doing. The movies most used, of the time. Well, yeah. we do it. We've done. Sometimes it. I do a bigger movie, but I'm a small part in the big right. movie. So I just I come so in and out. So I come and in. Do, you come in. Yes. And I do these little like this, jaunts. We were here every but yeah, and you just day. you feel like so wedded to yeah. the part and to the people, and and it really it, it feels like family and like the relationships become so important and sort of nurture them is so important because they're gonna put their arms underneath you and you're gonna put your arms underneath them and so it's just like it's like I mean it was almost it's it's it feels like recreating I think I've always loved making movies and and this work because you sort of create these families everywhere yes. you go yes. and this just felt like the long most like long-term family that I had yes. really stayed in absolutely and I miss that I, still. I, 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 I miss, I, mean, I think most people <laughs> would be shocked, but I, I do miss uh, sharp objects. I miss the people that I was close to. Yeah. And I missed Amy, you know, I, they, they were my children, even yeah. though I was not the best mother. Um, I, in order to play that part, had to love them in a way that, I, 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 that fact and fiction, you know, Blur. blurred and, you know, Amy and Eliza, these beautiful actresses and beautiful women became mine, do you know? I know. And, and, um, I was possessive of them. I and, know. And <laughs> <laughs> I know. Girls. <laughs> it's good to see you. Jackie, you finding everything? Mm -hmm. Everything found me. Well, enjoy, and please save some liquor for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed Camille's article. Oh, I haven't read it. You should really take a look at it. When you're, you're doing, like I, you know, as I was saying, when you're playing all of this, uh, this emotional character, but on top of that, you have to, 
you have to sing and dance and be this extraordinary woman that everybody loves. How was that? What? How did you prepare? Did you did you watch video or did you really try to kind of take a breath and how did you prepare? It was it was sort of both. You know, it's using whatever material is available, whatever research mm-hmm. material is available via YouTube. Um, and becoming uh, really familiar with that to the point where I, I, it's something I'd sort of picked up on Marilyn is just you watch all this material until it sort of absorbs and you can just like sort of see it play yeah. in your mind's eye. So there's that and then there's just the, the down and dirty of learning it. And, yeah. you know, we're New Yorkers, so we have access to like the most incredible dance teachers and voice yes. teachers and Juilliard. My dialect teacher is at Juilliard. And so I go to Juilliard, run up those stairs every day and stairs. I go into the classroom <laughs> and I um, I'm get like, I get, it's, it's like getting the education I never really had, sort of like in mm-hmm. reverse, but in real time. Right, yeah. And so we would, you know, Sam and I both were just nights and weekends, you know, when we weren't doing one thing, we were training for the next, or when we weren't filming, we were learning the next dance. Or, yeah. um, But I really just consider it the most incredible, like, honor and, and joy, and also to be supported. You know, a lot of, like, indie filmmaking is feeling like unsupported, which has its own well, benefit. Yes, it's you, own you make your own you muscles. Are flying, but, yeah, you, know, you are it, totally. It is, there is no net. There's, There's no a net, net and so though, you're when, developing when you're doing it for these yourself. Big television, There's a lot of net. There's yeah. a lot. Of, you can fall, and someone will catch you. And but you had Nicole Fossey, and we and had Nicole. Was she was it just incredible to have her around, and she was incredible because she was also able to. She's a she's she's lived an extraordinary life, and she has worked so much on herself and evolved and evolved mm-hmm. and evolved, and so she's able to come at this from a place of like complete openness and non-judgment to where I realize like she's, I mean, I, I, I say yeah. to her, I said to her then like, you are just like my greatest ally and like, you just give me treasure and I'm, yeah. and I'm, and I'm trying to, you know, make something beautiful with it because she was, at first I was nervous, like, oh, if she watches me, she's going to see all of the... That's nerve wracking. Yeah, it's yeah. nerve wracking. No. She's going to see right through I mean, me. And like, then I'm not going to be able to do it but when I just sort of like Im- just accepted her and realized that she was only there as like an emissary of love and support yeah. I was like okay I'm just gonna take her in and just take her well, in. Well and you've done Broadway shows I mean you've d- it is it's every on the days on the set I would imagine it's like being back on Broadway you know performing. It is it, and, it, you know, it, and you've got the chorus the, those amazing Amazing chorus. dancers amazing singers. They're well, that's incredible. so great about shooting in New York is you have all these incredible you know you've got Danny Bernstein coming in oh and you've God. got yes, yeah and we have yes. all these incredible <laughs> guest stars that are all these like know, you know, know renowned theater actors I you're know. like I can't believe that you're playing my gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Bernstein. How often do you say that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is, it's exciting. And um, are, you're done. You know, you, we are. Yeah, you're finished shooting. Yeah, okay. we're finished. We just finished about a month ago. And, Sammy, and now... Has Sammy's hair grown back in? Sammy's okay. hair is, is stubble on his head. It is. Okay. <laughs> we both look like a couple of Frankensteins underneath all of the, no, you know, because no. we age and so all of the prosthetics. No, but when you I take all of it, it off, you're just... But it's very He's subtle. bald. I didn't yeah. have any eyebrows <laughs> like covered in. But it's nice, you know, it's nice to have. And did you know Sammy before you did this? I'd only known Sammy as like, uh, you know, just a good, uh, as like a. Like a New Yorker. As a New Yorker. We, yeah, just as a good New Yorker. We all know each other We all know each other, but we just we hadn't all, weirdly worked yeah, with each we other. All, uh, what are you and he? Well, we met, I knew, I met Sammy when he was 21. I was 28, he was shooting Ninja Turtles in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I was shooting um, Tune In Tomorrow, this beautiful film with Barbara Hershey and Keanu Reeves. And in North Carolina? I, in, in Wilmington, North Carolina, and there was cute Sammy, and there was 28-year-old me, and we were just, but we hooked up, and we just got on. I don't know yeah. how it happened. We were all in a holiday inn. <laughs> <laughs> it always comes back to a holiday I mean, inn. I think, yes. I, I think the last thing I ever do, I'll probably be, <laughs> be in a holiday, holiday inn. inn. <laughs> you can't get close. That's your father. And it's why I think... I 
I never loved you. Can you talk to me? Oh, God. <laughs> Can you answer some personal questions of mine? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I want to know you, your yes. secrets. <laughs> I want to know your secrets. Okay. Um, uh, can you, in terms of preparation, like something that's, uh, something maybe that happens for you when you take on a role, when you initially start thinking about it, and then how that process evolves to while you're shooting it and, and even like the night before or the morning of, are there, are there little things that you've even just come to think of as like pattyisms? Like these are just like your, hmm. your, my, your, my, your little touchstones. My, yeah. Um, I think what's most important for me is I don't, I don't, it's odd as I have, you know, of course, enormous and great respect for writers. But for me, what is most important is not to dwell on the script. The lines will come. Um, I think it's most important that I, I have an emotional life and center of this character, that I know the characters, um, demons and angels, and they're very close because you're going to need both, um, at the touch of a you know the drop of a hat, mm -hmm. and so and a director can't help you with that often, and as you know, and so I I think it's most important. I call it kind of walking the part, like I. I cling to one thing the character has said, and I just walk it. I think mm. of it all day. I think of it throughout like a week or two of time before I'm starting the project. And once I feel the emotional life, then I start to look at the words. Mm. But I don't want to look at I don't look at the words until I, you till feel I, like you have this I, emotional. I know. And but what was interesting with Adora because of. Um, just the nature of her, I, I realized that I couldn't really think too far out with her. I had to take her in an unusual way as an actor. I really, I couldn't prepare long term. I had to just take her really one day, one week, at a, one day, one, one episode at a time and not even sometimes get to the end of the episode. Just think of what she is day to day, who she is, what she mm -hmm. wants remain high with her because she was going to go so low mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's a very emotional for me to talk about because the, the, the depth of, of where she goes is, is unforgiving and unforgivable. Um, and as we know, as actors, it is not our job to judge. It is our job to be. And, um, Never in my life has that been so called upon mm. for me with this woman. and But I love her, and I stand by that, and I am thankful to have played her and to have entered that world. But And so the night before I tried to, these dark journeys I was on, uh -huh. I tried to stay as high as I could. It's odd. I I tried not to, 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 to sink um, because I knew so much was coming that I tried to stay almost vain about her, keep the vanity about her till I got on the set so and then let it all fall. So that's, so you know, interesting. <laughs> um, how did you? <laughs> so interesting. That is such a. Some, some people would say it's a French way to work. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that is such a choice piece of. Um, but it was just how I could manage and do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in the end, it... But I also had, you know, the remarkable Amy Adams around me and Eliza, this exquisite young girl, and my director who, you know, brought every single uh, fraction of every single moment of that script into life. and. And nothing was left, no, nothing was left unexplored or charted or exploded, mm -hmm. nothing. Would you guys do, would you, would you work, were there a lot of takes? Were there a lot of? Well, Jean-Marc works in a way that he goes from the beginning to the end, the beginning to the end, the beginning to the end. So he doesn't believe in uh, shooting a piece of a scene. You're, you have a big family scene in the kitchen. And he, he, you do go from beginning to end, beginning to end. Wow. It's, it's a, it's, it, it, it's, it's a, um, and you don't really rehearse much. Um, 
Would you rehearse? I have imitated sort of him before. On film? <laughs> He's like, so you come in and you're like, ah, you're like, I'm going to have some coffee. And then maybe you put it down and then you say, oh, okay, I like this plan. No, I don't. I don't like this plan. <laughs> and then you go over and you go like, you're going to say hello to your daughter. Oh, I love you. No, you don't love her. And then you sit back down and then you're like, ah, maybe, well, maybe I do want some coffee. Okay, let's shoot. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. I'm like, mm, okay. So you would, as we say, <laughs> rehearse on film. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I, but I think it's beautiful yeah. for this project and what we were doing and the, just the honesty and the, uh, and, and the verisimilitude. I mean, it was, there was truth in it. We, it wasn't planned and orchestrated and many of the scenes were just alive and we had no idea. I did this scene with Chris Messina that was four pages long. We never said the words till we, the film, the, the camera was running. And it was, we How had the greatest fun. time. How fun. Did you, were you well, another to, good yeah. New Yorker, Chris Messina. Uh, He's such a dreamboat. Yeah, yeah, we were at I mean, Williamstown together. Wait, I saw you. The remember, cherry orchard? I saw you in the you cherry came, orchard. Didn't you? Remember yes, I you came. came. Yes, you did. I, I remember. Doing, I remember. Because well, it was, was almost right ride, after. I was doing Ride Down Mount Morgan that summer. It's the summer I became dearest friends with Amy Ryan. And we were in town. We had just come in to re start rehearsing. And we saw your rehearsal. With cherry, Linda Eamon. With li gorgeous with Linda Eamon. I mean, I mean, the amazing Linda Eamon. That still to this day remains yeah. one of the greatest moments I've ever seen in the basement at Williamstown, that production of Cherry Orchard. You were all perfectly cast. All you had on was your rehearsal clothes. There was no set. You were just in this basement, this raw, beautiful, um, bare. Yeah. I mean, I just thought Chekhov is in, in just smiling wherever the hell he is. He was just in heaven. That's that was Chekhovian to me, I'll, I, and and you and Chris were so yummy and so young, That's so nice. <laughs> and so young. Oh my God! And uh, Jessica Chastain was Jessica, our Anya. Yes, Jessica Chastain. This, I mean, it was just, it was incredible. It was like one of those moments. It was like station agent. Just like just, sometimes there's these. But Amy and I just we were gonna go see the run through. We were like we're that gonna go fun. see the run through of Cherry Orchard, and then. After rehearsal, we came. We rehearsed and we said, let's go see the run through of Cherry Orchard. And there it was, all of you, in impeccable. It was. We should go back it's the to best Williams production Town. of Cherry Orchard I've ever seen. In that basement. Anyway. I'm out of business without oh, you. Oh, no, I wanna... you skipped a section, Bob. There's the part where you swear it didn't mean anything. You were lonely, drinking too much, working too hard. I'm, I'm in love with her. So you did, you know, I, I said earlier, you, hadn't, you haven't done television lately, but I know you did this very big, big, big show <laughs> um, many, many years ago. Yes. And what do you, I mean, you now realize having done Dawson's Creek and now working for FX, how, how much it has changed. That it's changed, yes. Um, people had told me how much it had changed, but doing Dawson's Creek for six and a half years, well, it was an incredible learning experience, just mm -hmm. even from just a technical standpoint of being able to hit marks or, um, you know, get comfortable with a camera being in your face, that kind of stuff. It also, you know, it felt a little bit, it was like, a t it was a very different kind of television, though. You right. know, you were, we did 22 episodes a year. You'd be getting scripts sort of at the last minute and you had like zero um, input. Yeah. So that was hard. It was a little bit like a you know, a factory job where right. some things just, it was, more, it's it was formulaic. It was formulaic. And you couldn't yes. curse or be naked. You can't curse or be naked. <laughs> um, try as I might. And, and now it's cable. <laughs> we can do whatever, <laughs> do whatever we want. Um, and so that experience, while teaching me a lot about one thing, also taught me a lot about um, uh, something that I, I, I wasn't yearning to repeat, which is like I, I just wanted more, I didn't want to be told what to do. It, it, it was very, there was a long time, you know, six yeah. and a half years of, of essentially being. You were on that show for six, six and, and a half years. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, it was very formative. But, but you were still so young. So by the time. By the time I got out of it, yes, I was well, you only were, 22. You were 22, right. So, and then you didn't go back to television. No. For 
that's why I, you know, I, 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 you haven't even done, was this the first TV? This is the first, uh, let me think about that. Haven't you done a, that, you, you know, you I, did a, a, I did a, I did a thing guessed. for HBO a, a long, long time ago called If These Walls Could Talk Too. Um, so maybe that, too. <laughs> <two. laughs> Although I think I was also on Dawson's Creek while I was doing that. So maybe okay. that was around the same time. Um, I don't think that I did. I don't think I've done television in between then and, and now. Um, because of a, a fear of loss of um, input. Yes. And, uh, and then when this came around, people had been saying for a long time, oh, television's different now, television's different yeah. now. And, and I could see that that was true and that it was something that I should um, open myself up to. And then when this came along with Sammy, I remember Sam when Rockwell, Sammy told me he, that you were doing it, he was beside himself. I, he I've, was so excited I about you doing this. Always wanted to work with him. Always. Yeah. Always. And so when it was him and it was Tommy Kale and it was all these, you know, New Yorkers and yeah. at home, I, I said, okay, well, I, I, yeah, I want to try it again. And Stephen Levinson. Where did Levinson, you shoot this? We were, we were all over the city. We were, we were in all the boroughs. We were <laughs> Staten Island. We were Queens. We were the Bronx. We were Brooklyn. Right, okay. um, so it was a job that, it's really important for me to try and stay at home as much as possible. Yes. It's, yeah. it's just the only way that I know how to do both things at once, parent and this. So, um, so I was like, oh, great, a seven-month job at home. I'll yeah. take it. And then what I found is very much like what you were saying is that it's not television. It's, it's not, or it's, it doesn't have a mentality of being television, right. of being like lesser than or being, mm -hmm. um, they are, they're like little mini movies little every day it's the same most and because it's just there, a longer we do have some control we do have input we do it's not formulaic yeah. we're not answering to a very specific we're not living by like a code of conduct almost. right that's i think and that's and right. we 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 can oh i was going to say something naughty but um <laughs> we can spread our legs if we want to <laughs> uh, <laughs> Our Can legs are and our wings. <laughs> Can we say that on variety? <laughs> Am I going to be kicked off? Voice. I don't know. Where, how, well, I, well, you had a specific person to, 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 to be. But have you been on a journey with your voice because of doing stage and because of yeah. doing, have you found that your voice has changed or that you alter the way that you sound for... Of course, I, I well, everyone talked about like when I was doing a door that I was whispery, and I was like, I'm, aren't I kind of whispery? But I think, I think the body never lies, and the voice always follows if the body isn't lying. So, I think the voice will rise. I think the voice will come. It will match the body. Mm -hmm. It will match. The character will define your mm -hmm. voice. I mean, as much as you had to sound like when Verdon. I never thought of you as I was watching you of doing a voice. I thought of you as just Gwen. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I just, I never, it didn't, so maybe that's well, the best part. because if you part. get trapped in it, then yeah. it's just a voice, and then it's sort of all that you can hear. But I mean, the, yeah. it's been such an interesting um, part of this sort of training that I've endeavored to take on sort of, later in life in terms of um, uh, going to Juilliard or like going to London to take with Patsy Rodenberg or just yeah. going all these places to figure out how to better use this, um, the, the, like the only thing that I have to work with and yeah. thinking about voices, you know, you know, where it's coming from in the body and where the, um, I worked with this wonderful coach at Juilliard, Deb Hecht, and we talked a lot about it. Deb Hecht taught me in Yale. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Deborah Eck was my voice teacher at Yale. She's amazing. Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> She's Isn't she just wonderful? How crazy. Well, we worked yeah. on Gwen together, and we talked oh, so much how about yeah, yeah. where the voice, where it was, you know, not just the sounds that she's making or the shapes that she's making, but really, like, where in her body it's yeah. located. And we searched and searched yeah. for this thing. And then we sort of found that it was coming from, like, this idea of an ego, like something that could appear to be quite strong, but was like really very fragile. And as soon as I thought of the voice as coming from like her ego center, something just sort of locked mm -hmm. in because it was a lot of components to take in at once in terms of Gwen's sound being 
sort of also changing as she aged from mm -hmm. 30 to 60, the, yeah. the voice progresses and the voice changes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but you're right, if the, if it, it follows the body, it's, it a, it's a bodily, it's not really it, the voice. It's actually like, yeah. it's actually where the, where you're, where it's located in the body and how it's resonating and how it's re yeah. through the body. And that, you know, I think as we age as actors, I think we become more comfortable with, I think we become more comfortable in our body and in our souls and in our identities, but we become, it becomes the transition into these voices or characters. I think they become hopefully more seamless. They become, um, because we don't care. In the same way. <laughs> it's one of, it's the great advantage of aging. Yes. Is As that, we age, we yeah, we, we actually get more the, facility is, with the thing that we do. But this is the insanity do. of working. That's why we should be working more as we age because we're way better. So much better. So much I'm better. having so much more because fun. Because we're so much more relaxed. <laughs> yes, and we're, relaxed. We yeah. have so much more to give, and yeah. we've lived just tortured lives. <laughs> I wore fishnets today. I just want to make sure you remember. I'm in honor of honored. Fossey. I'm I wore honored. These for you. <laughs> I adore you. Um. <laughs> but I mean, we're lucky that we can. They're all like the you know whatever happens, you know, in terms of this, uh, the, the theater will always. I feel like it's always. It's yeah. always that's a place that, you know, with Glenda Jackson. On stage now, which at we should go see. Yeah, which at we 83. at eighty three. Like there's, it's amazing. There is, but television and movie, they're changing. Things are shifting. Yeah, they're getting better. Okay. The, the you know the theater's always going to be there for us, but things are better. They're Let's they're go better. Go see Glenda Jackson. Are these wooden, these nags. Yes, Sarah. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs>